Today, we set up 32-bit Marlin. The last stable release of Marlin 1.1.9 should be the last 8-bit only release of Marlin. Everything going forward should have support for 32-bit boards. Now, Marlin 2.0 is already out there. It's just not quite ready for prime time yet. But it should be good enough for a test, so we can get a jump on this whole 32-bit board craze. Now, the first thing you're going to need is a 32-bit mainboard for your 3D printer. And there's a lot of different choices out there. But a man named Michael was doing some testing on his Ender 3, and he thought I needed my own 32-bit board to do some testing with. So he sent me this board. It's a Rearm. The Rearm board has a 32-bit processor. It's an LPC 1768 at 100 megahertz. The best part about the Rearm setup, it's the same form factor as an Arduino Mega. So it's a direct swap out, and you can use a ramp shield. Michael sent me a ramp shield with this board, he even replaced the poly fuses with some blade fuse connectors. He even threw in the fuses. And I was so impressed with the rearm board, I actually bought myself a spare. They're around $45 US, but I'm sure the price will come down as popularity grows. Again, thank you, Michael, for sending me this board and this shield. I'm not going to use this shield for this project because this printer already has one, so I'm just going to do a straight swap out on the main board. Now, to get this thing installed, it's not going to be just like any other mainboard where you just upload it to the IDE. In fact, the firmware lives on an SD card, so you're going to need an SD card for this project. Hopefully, I can walk you through this step by step and get your configuration up and running as well. So, let's go over to the computer and get everything configured. So, the first thing we want to do is head over to the Marlin GitHub and check out the release nodes on 2.0. So, if you don't know how to do that, you just select the branch up here and make sure you're on bugfix 2.0. And then we'll scroll down to get some more info. Now something to note is the HAL, the hardware abstraction layer. This isn't really critical that you know this, but it is somewhat interesting. This is what allows them to build for 32-bit boards, but still support the 8-bit AVR. Now fortunately for us, the rearm board is kind of the basis around 2.0. They kind of go from that configuration and then work into other configurations. And there's a really good guide on how to get the ARM board set up. So if you click here, build Marlin 2.0 for ARM, this is going to walk you through all the steps you need to do to get this thing set up. And this is pretty much what I'm going to be following as well. Now the very first thing we need to do is format our SD card so it'll work correctly with the rearm board. If you're using a card that's greater than 32 gig, you're going to have to partition that card because you can't read a file system larger than that. This is a 16 gig card, so we should be okay. So we're going to right click, we're going to format, we're going to make sure it says FAT32. 32. 32 kilobytes is fine, but we need to name it rearm, all lowercase. And then hit start. Format is complete. Now we can plug our SD card into the board. We're still not powered up yet. And we need to move the jumper so that it'll be powered by USB. So just move this red jumper over to those two pins. The empty one's at the top. Now you can connect your rearm board up via USB to your computer. The red light on the rearm board should come on because we're powered by USB, and you should now be able to see an SD card called rearm in Windows Explorer. That's a good sign. The next thing we're going to need is some sort of IDE for us to edit the code and compile it, and we're going to use Platform IO IDE, but you can't use it by itself. So there's a couple different options for text slash source code editing environments that you can use. I'm going to use Atom because I prefer it, and this is a really nice walkthrough of how to get all that set up. First, we're going to download it. And then if you go to Downloads, we'll just start the setup wizard. We can go ahead and let Adam handle this by default. So, yes, always. So now we need to install the Platform IO IDE. So we'll go to File, Settings, and then hit Install. And we need to search for Platform IO IDE. And we want the one that says Official Platform IO IDE. So we'll hit Install. Now you're going to get this reminder to install Clang, and if you don't, you need to go install it. But this is going to be required for the IDE. So we can go ahead and hit install Clang. It's going to bring up these directions, and I'm going to install Clang 3.9.1 for Windows 64-bit. When the download is complete, we can just go ahead and click on it to open it. We want to add LLVM to the system path for all users. Click Next. Click Install. While Clang is installing, you still have stuff going on in the background here with Platform I.O. If you get this error while you're installing Clang, don't worry about it. Just hit any key. And you can click Finish. 
Now we're still waiting on the platform IDE to be installed. And then soon after that, your platform IO IDE should be done. So it's going to give you this restart message. We'll go ahead and restart Atom. And when Atom comes back up, you should now have your platform IO home. And I'm just going to drag it over here to make it a little bigger. Now our next step is we need to go grab Marlin 2.0. So we'll just go to the Marlin main site, download, and you want this guy right here, the development version, it's bug fix 2.0. Downloads complete, we can go into downloads and extract all. And if you're using that Marlin guide, they want you to put it into a folder called Marlin firmware just to keep things consistent. And hit extract. We've extracted it into Marlin firmware, but this folder also needs to be called Marlin firmware. So we'll rename it Marlin firmware. So now we've got it in the right folder, we need to open it up in platform IO. So we'll head back to Atom, open project, go home and find the downloads folder, scroll down to Marlin firmware, click on the Marlin firmware folder again, and hit open Marlin firmware. Now that the project's open, we want to make sure that the path to our rearm board is correct. So again, make sure your jumper's on USB, your SD card's in, and your cabled up USB to your rearm board. So here we want to click Devices, and in the Serial tab, you want to make sure your rearm board appears correctly, right here, COM25. And then in the Logical tab, you want to make sure your rearm SD card appears, and this is it right here, we named it Rearm. And now you want to copy this SD card path to your clipboard, so click on the little blue icon here. It's also really useful to set the default environment variable, so let's go ahead and get that set up, it makes things a little easier in the future. So you want to come over here and click on platformio.ini, and that should bring it up in the editor, and if it doesn't, you can right click on it and tell it what tab and what location you'd like to bring it up in. So I just say hit split left. But it should bring it up automatically. We're concerned with this env underscore default. Since we're using an ARM board, we want to change that to LPC 1768. And then we need to scroll down and find the LPC 1768 environment. So just keep scrolling, it'll be in blue. And here it is right here. And just right underneath that line, let's add upload underscore port. And then we'll do equal. And then you can paste in what you copy from the devices screen on the SD card. It's just going to be the SD card's drive location. In my case, it's J colon forward slash. And we should be good here, and now we can save it. Just go to file, save. So we're done with this file, we can go ahead and close it now that it's saved. And then we can start working on configuration.h. Over here on the project, just double click configuration.h and that'll open it up. Scrolling down through here, we don't want to make too many changes yet before we test it, but there are a couple of things that we need to change. And the first thing that I've found that needs to be different is this serial port. Switch this to negative one. I'm not sure why, but when you go to interact with the board, there's some sort of conflict with that serial port, but if you switch it to negative one, that seems to get it out of the way. We'll go down to the board setting, and it's pretty much the same board name as RAMS, only we need to put a rearm in it. So 14 underscore RE underscore ARM underscore. And then we can save this file. Again, other boards, you're going to have to use different board names, but this is for the rearm. And then if you're using Atom, that's the only change we need to make. You can come down here to the bottom left and try to build it. Hit PIO build. And we should be able to just select PIO build from the list. And down here, the build window will open, and it'll start compiling Marlin. And we have an error down here that it wants us to install the Git client. No worries. It provides us a link. We'll copy that. We'll download the one for Windows, and we'll click on it to install. Next. Next. Defaults are fine here. Hit Next. It's got you using Vim as the default file editor. I much prefer Notepad++, so we'll use that. Hit Next. Under Windows Command Prop is fine. Hit Next. OpenSSH is fine, OpenSSL is fine, Checkout Windows Style is fine. You can use either terminal editor that you'd like. I'm just going to go with the CMD. These two being checked is fine. You don't want either one of these, and click Install. Now Git has been installed, we can click Finish. Let's close Atom, and we'll reopen. Your configuration.h tab should still be open, and you can just hit PIO Build to try it again. PIO Build. If the build is successful, this build window down here will just disappear. On my computer, it took roughly two minutes before it started compiling anything, and almost five minutes for the build to complete. 
but it did complete successfully. And if your build was complete and you set your environment variables like I showed you in the video, all you should have to do is hit PI Upload. So you can come up here to Platform I.O. and just hit Upload. It took around 30 seconds to upload to the board. Now back over to your rearm board after your upload's complete, let's go ahead and hit the reset button. And when the rearm SD card shows up again, that's how you know the reboot's complete. You want to make sure that you can see the EEPROM.dat and the firmware file on that SD card. Now we should be able to communicate with Marlin on this board. So let's just open up Proterface. We're on COM25, we're at 250,000, let's hit connect. And now the board's online. Let's throw some commands at it to see what we've got. Let's do an M503. It looks to be communicating correctly. You can do an M500 and an M502. This will make sure EEPROM's working. And you can just do some example commands if you want to. M114, uh, M119, just to make sure everything's correct. And it looks good. Now that we know the board's working with the default config, let's disconnect, and then we'll go set it to work with the log machine. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to run through here real quick and set all the things we need to get the machine working, and then later I can come back and tweak it even further if I need to. Thermistors, one and one for the bed. I'm just going to leave PID default for now, and I can run an auto-tune later. End stops, all mine are set up to true. You can uncomment these for the A4988 drivers. Movement steps, mine is 100, 100, 1600, and 135. Feed rate, only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to go down to 3 on Z. Default acceleration is fine. Default jerk values are fine. Z min probe uses Z minimum end stop. That's what we have. We have a fixed mounted probe. My offset is 23, 10, and negative 0.9. I've got my minimum probe edge set to zero. I've got my directions inverted, so true, false, true. My extruder needs to be inverted. And this is just based on how you have the motors plugged in. Bed size, I've got a 250 by 210. Max Z is 210. On to bed leveling, we use auto bed leveling by linear. And for my setup, I adjust the probe points manually. So I clear these out and enter the values. So I do 23, 225, 10, and 205. All the rest should be default. I won't mess with SKU for now. I'm going to go ahead and disable EEPROM because that can make things a little confusing sometimes. I'm going to update my filament settings. I like to go 210, 55, ABS 255, 100. I'll come back and do nozzle park later. I'm going to go ahead and enable SD support. And that's important to mention, you can't use the SD card on the rearm board for G-code. You have to have an alternate SD card reader, like the one that's on the riprap discount controller. I like to reverse my encoder direction so the wheel turns the other way. Go ahead and turn the speaker on. I have the riprap discount smart controller. And that should be more than enough to get us up and going. So let's go ahead and do another build. The build was successful, now we can go ahead and upload. And the upload's complete. Now that the upload's complete, we can go ahead and remove the USB cable, and we need to move our jumper back to the other pin. This will keep it from being powered just by USB. And the config is done, so now all we have to do is tear apart the printer and install this new board. So I'm just going to pop the case open. We'll pull off the LCD adapter. And if you're real careful, you might be able to just take the whole ramp shield off. I'm going to go ahead and slide the board case off the frame just to make it a little easier to get to. Case is off. I'm going to go ahead and take the old Mega out. Old Mega's out. We should be able to just slide our rearm right in its place. The rearm is in. and We should be able to put the shield right back where it was. The ramp sandwich is complete. We can put our LCD and SD card back on. We can slide the case back on the printer and close up shop. The rearm's in. Let's boot up and make sure everything still works. Now we're booted up. It looks like the LCD screen isn't working, but we'll have to take a look at that a little later. Let's try some test moves. Let's go X. X looks good. How about Z? Z looks good. How about Y? 
Y looks good. Let's go ahead and home all. So we home successfully. That tells me the probe is working and all the end stops and motors are set correctly. Let's go ahead and try to heat up. The temperatures are starting to go up, so that looks good. While that's working, let's try a G29. Make sure bed leveling set up correctly. And G29 seems to be working correctly. So everything seems to be in order. Let's go ahead and start a print. And it appears to be printing successfully. And that's it, 32-bit Marlin on a rearm board. Now the only thing I wasn't able to test is this 2004 LCD screen and SD card reader. It looks like I'm going to have to have some sort of adapter to make that work with this setup, but I'll save that for another video. Now why would you want a 32-bit board? Well, it's all about processing power. If you want to print faster, you're going to have to process that G code faster. And that's where the extra processing power comes in. It might not matter so much on a Cartesian machine, but on a Core XY or a Delta, it is going to matter. And 8-bit boards, as the 8-bit chips falls out of fashion, less people are going to manufacture them. So eventually, we'll have to go to 32-bit boards. A big thanks to Michael again for sending me this board. It's really cool, and I enjoyed setting it up. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.